Hello and welcome to Tag One Team Talks, the blog and podcast of Tag One Consulting. We're celebrating over 20 years of Drupal with an interview series featuring community leaders that have been instrumental in creating one of the largest open source communities and one of the most popular content management systems that powers 3% of the internet. Our goal is to give you some insight into how to run and grow an open source community and how there are opportunities for everybody to contribute and in sharing our stories and the positive impact that it's had on both our professional and personal lives, our hope is that this is going to inspire you to get more engaged in and support more open source communities yourself. I'm Michael Myers, the Managing Director at Tag One Consulting. Tag One builds large scale applications for global 500s and leading organizations in every sector using a variety of open source technologies. And we really pride ourselves on our open source contributions. We're the number two all-time contributor to Drupal. We created Goose, which is the most scalable open source load testing framework. Uh, we support YJS, real-time collaboration framework, the uh, Oregon State uh, Open Source Labs, which powers an infrastructure for many of the most popular projects, uh, the Rust Foundation, and, and many more organizations. And I just like to say, if you are using open source technology and you're not supporting it, you're doing it wrong, uh, and please do so. I am super excited to have Matthew Saunders on the show today. Uh, you guys have all heard of the 10x developer. Uh, well, even more rare is the 10x business leader. And I can tell you firsthand from working with Matthew around 15 years ago that he is a force to be reckoned with. He has been a prolific and diverse contributor to the Drupal community. And we have so many interesting things to talk about today. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, Matthew's been in the Drupal community for around 16 years now. He's written documentation, he's given talks, he's organized camps, he's organized conferences. Um, he's run working groups to organize and run conferences. Uh, he's also been a board member of the Drupal Association, which I'm really excited to talk about because that's a pretty rare and unique thing. Uh, professionally, he's worked in pretty much every capacity you can, co-founder, COO, CTO, VP of project management, and more. So he's got a really diverse background and experience and skill set. And he's also worked pretty much everywhere you can on the agency side. He's also, you know, run and created agencies. Uh, he's led the creation of the first top 100 Drupal website. Um, and he currently works on the client side as a director at Pfizer. So really, uh, we have a lot to talk about. Matthew, it's so great to see you. Thank you for, for joining us today. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Happy to talk to you. And as always, Mike, I'm happy to see you. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I thought we'd go way back and and talk about first, like how you got into technology. You know, uh, did you always want to be in technology? You know, was there some sort of pivotal moment? Yeah, that's really interesting. I'm I'm an accidental technologist. Um, um, I fell into it in you know purely purely by chance. Um, if you go way 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 back, I played around with uh, with computers like a lot of a lot of people you know back in the '80s did. I built a, a Sinclair ZX80 at one point um, and. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I uh, at the school they had trash eighties that uh, you could do program in basic and and uh, and so on. But that was never really a huge focus of mine. Um, I was more interested in the arts. Um, I uh, I was interested in painting and sculpture and music and uh, and theater. Um, and it just so happens that um, when I completed completed high school, I, I felt like I needed to spend a little bit of time before I went off to university. And so I, I did a vocational art program and I worked in a, in a, in a coffee shop as a barista. And um, uh, during that period of time, um, I, I sort of figured out that, uh, that uh, I was going to go to school uh, to do fine arts and theater. Fast forward, uh, you know, four years later, um, and uh, I was working in a bookshop, um, and um, ended up managing one of the the bookshops. It was a little little uh, it was a little independent bookstore chain, and um, I was also doing theater lighting, which I really did enjoy, um, and it was good money. But I looked around at all these guys that were in their, you know, their, oh gosh, they were old, right? They were in their late 30s, early 40s. <laughs> they were ancient. Our age now. They're, they're oh, ancient. 
<laughs> they were so old. Uh, but what I saw was 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 guys that were getting really worn out, right? And um, and and I realized after talking to some of the older ones, particularly, um, that it's not uncommon for 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 um, technicians in theater to literally be held together by the work that they do. And then when they stop doing it, they fall apart physically. And I thought to myself, I don't want that in my life. Like, I, I like doing what I'm doing, uh, but this is a young man's game. So I did a, a, a certificate program at the University of Ottawa. Um, and at the end of it, got a job for the summer um, working at an experimental dance company where they needed a webmaster. Um, this is back in 1995. Uh, what the heck is a webmaster? You couldn't Google webmaster because Google didn't exist. Um, uh, but I was on this little, this little, uh, board called Lambda Moo, and I had friends there who I knew knew something about the web and, uh, asked them questions and, and, uh, found myself in a situation where I was the webmaster for this experimental dance company back when there were less than 10,000 websites on the internet. Um, and so I, that's where I sort of learned between Lambda Moo, where I learned object-oriented programming. Um, I learned markup um, uh, while I was uh, working for the dance company. But that was sort of that was sort of tangential to one of the really cool things that happened that summer. That was um, the, the this dance company partnered up with with five other dance companies around Canada. I'm Canadian, um, and they they set up um, live high-speed video links between five dance companies and five uh, five different uh, dance studios with five different audiences and produced a piece of work in real time. And I nearly fell over. I couldn't um, I couldn't I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I had been accepted to go down to Virginia Tech to do uh, a Master of Fine Arts in marketing. And I got down there and I said to my um, my committee, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do marketing. Uh, let me tell you what, what I just experienced. And they sort of hummed and hawed and, uh, and ultimately said, okay, Matthew, um, I'm, we're going to give you a, a length of rope and you can hang yourself. Um, and basically they gave me, they gave me six weeks to figure out what, what I was going to study and what I was going to do. And that turned into a series of technology-based projects um, that uh, that uh, integrated uh, theater, um, it integrated um, software development, networks. Um, it in it integrated high high speed video casts um, and uh, bi directional uh, high speed video casts at that. Um, and I did three pieces of work that uh, um, that utilized that technology. Um, and that's what my master's became. So it wasn't in marketing really at all. Um, and that ended up having me teach at the university for, for a year and a half. I worked with Visit Virginia, uh, uh, developing the first database driven, um, uh, database driven, um, uh, site for for tourists where you could uh, type in when you you were going to start uh, start your your visit in Virginia when it was going to end um, what city you're going to start in what city you wanted to end end in and you'd hit a button and it would uh, uh, and what you were interested in you'd hit a button and about five minutes later it would spit out uh, a, an agenda of what it thought that you might be interested in um, and uh, that uh, that site although technically was really interesting, um, was a spectacular uh, failure because nobody really knew. This was the back in the days when people would go to AAA and get a triptych, right? Um, and, uh, uh, and for all you youngins uh, out there, a triptych is a special map that, uh, that the AAA um, uh, company, you know, organization, nonprofit, would put together for you when you wanted to go on a on a road trip, and it basically allowed you to have your map that was, you know, just for you, um, which you could use like a little book, and it would take you the places that you wanted to go. Um, anyway, um, all of that sort of sort of led me down a road where um, I ultimately got to, um, uh, offered a job um, in Colorado 
to lead up the technology um, practice at a nonprofit that built software for other nonprofits and for state arts agencies and to state agencies of different kinds. And I did stuff like, like uh, um, uh, grant making software and so on. And that's where I sort of found myself ultimately coming into Drupal. That's so it was accidental. Yeah. Uh, I, I love origin stories. And I mean, experimental dance company, that's like experimenting with cutting edge technology on top of dance. I mean, that's insane. Uh, that's such a cool story. And uh, you know, that database you talked about, I mean, back then, you know, like you didn't have the ability, like everything was static, you know, simple HTML sites, you know, you, you typically didn't enter in data. So not only were you, you know, people didn't know what a triptych was, but like, damn, like way, way ahead of things. Um, that server was in a closet. <laughs> 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 um and triple a side note big longtime user of drupal so we come full circle um so then i i assume that's when uh you ended up at ping vision um and is is ping vision where you discover drupal or or did, like how did how did yeah so so no that that isn't quite uh the beginning of the drupal story so one of the things that happened when i was working at the western states arts federation near the end of my tenure was there's this buzzword right uh web 2.0 right everybody was talking about web 2.0 and uh and my and my boss at the time sent me off um to take part in a think tank in uh vancouver british columbia and that think tank really, I mean, it had all kinds of thought leaders, ranging from people in publishing to people who uh, who were in the in the hard sciences, uh, to to people who were working in open source, uh, all over the place. And one of the groups that was invited to come talk were a couple of guys from Bright, um, and uh, and Man. and they were and they were talking about this Drupal thing, and. One of the things, if 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 I got nothing out else out of that think tank uh, experience, it was, I never need to write a user authentication protocol ever again. Right, I never. That's something I never need to do again because it's been done for me, and um, that turned into a series of workshops. So I actually even have a little certificate from Bright um, for uh, for a theming workshop that I did with them in in uh, in uh, in Vancouver uh, a few months later um and um that was way back in you know 4.5.1 4 4.5.2 something like that um it was the days of flexi node um and uh you know the the precursor to 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 views um and and I and I was really excited about it but my boss at uh, at the at the nonprofit, he wasn't excited about it, um, and um, and I and I thought to myself, do I really want to keep building um, custom MySQL um, uh, applications? Um, and um, I, I I came to the conclusion, no, I I want to do something different. Um, and Ping Vision was a vendor of of West Staff at the time um doing some 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 light Drupal work for for the nonprofit um and uh um it just so happened that they were look, looking for somebody who could help manage their their project management uh, and uh work and uh, and also um do some of their operations um so that's how I landed in my first agency doing Drupal work wow um that's crazy. Do you still have that theming certificate? Please tell me yes. I do. Oh my God. <laughs> um, I was introduced to Drupal uh, by Boris Mann in yeah. Vancouver. I mean, uh, that's that's such a small world. Um, that's crazy. You got to put that online. I would love to see it. It is online somewhere. I, I, I'm pretty sure that I that I posted it on on uh, on. Uh, Twitter or Facebook or something like that. Uh, I'll I'll dig it up. I'll dig it up and send you over a link. It's it's pretty funny. That's pretty wild, especially where you are today. I mean, <laughs> um, I, I want I want to transition a bit, but because uh, I, I mean I, I want to keep talking about the professional stuff and and um, but since we're sort of at the origin here of of your connection with Drupal, um, you know, you have gotten really engaged in the community in a way that you know very few people do. Um, 
And so I want to talk a little bit about that. Like, um, do you remember when you went from I discovered Drupal to, you know, the first time that you got engaged in the community? And do you remember like, in, in, you know, what that was or what capacity, you know? Yeah. So, so the first, the first time um, I was actually um, on an interview with Pink Vision. And um, they had me come uh, on one of the days that they were having a meetup. Um, and uh, and uh, I, uh, I stuck around after the interview. I was, felt like such a dork. I was in a suit. Everybody else was in jeans and t-shirts, right? Um, but, but I sat around the table with, uh, with, uh, with a bunch of, uh, bunch of other guys, uh, you know, eating pizza and, uh, and uh, enjoying each other's company and talking about uh, things that we're working on. Um, and uh, for me, that really clinched it, right? And a few days later, um, I joined, I joined that company and, uh, um, and, uh, uh, that sort of segued into me starting to plan, help plan some of the first, uh, some of the first, uh, uh, Drupal camps. Um, and, um, our first one was actually in the office in Boulder. It was small. It was only about 10 people. It was more of a glorified, um, uh, meetup than anything. But the next one after that uh, was uh, was at one of the technical schools in in uh, Metro Denver, where we rented a uh, rented uh, um, uh, a room. Actually, we might have even gotten it for free. Uh, but uh, that that uh, was that was more than just a, a group of us that were associated with with uh, with uh, with company. We had f people from a couple of other little agencies. We even had uh, a guy that came over from from uh, from the United Kingdom, who who did a who did a talk, um, and and uh, that's sort of how how uh, Drupal Camp Colorado began. Um, so I was I was right in and at the very very beginning of of planning that camp and being involved in that camp. I have been to uh, a very large number of camps around the world, and I have to say that uh, I've been to the Colorado camp I think at least twice, and I was blown away at how well run and organized it was. Like the the production quality was fantastic. You know, the food was great, the speakers. I mean, like it, it was just on every level, it was fantastic. And um, I'm wondering, you know, there are a lot of people out there that, that want to run events. There are a lot of people out there that do run events. Um, this, you know, your event stood out, you know, by far. Um, what do you think the secret to your success was? And, you know, do you have any advice that you would give to, you know, would be organizers. I think big, big secret to that success um, was being in the right place at the right time. Um, there was a ton of energy, uh, you know, back in you know, 2007, 2008, 2009. Um, lots and lots of, of uh, lots of young energy, right? And lots of people getting super excited about about uh, um, Drupal as potentially as being a, a a career. And as we got closer and closer to Drupal uh, DrupalCon um, in uh, in in Denver, and I was one of the one of the organizing committee members on that. Um, before it was taken over by uh, um, professional professional organizers, which, by the way, was a very, very smart thing for them to do because everybody after um, organizing um, DrupalCons would be pretty much burned out because it became a, a full, nearly a full-time uh, second job. But um, for us, I think the fact that Colorado, that uh, Denver got DrupalCon in, in, uh, in 2012 um, practically meant that people were super interested in going to our camp the year before to sort of, um, you know, scope out what uh, what this Colorado scene was all about. Um, so I feel like a big part of it was being in the right time, uh, you know, being in the right place at the right time, having having sort of that extra energy going going on, and having really good good uh, supporting organizations. That we worked for, who wanted uh, wanted the uh, camp to to do well as well. Um, 
Um, and, you know, we lucked out um, in terms of venue. We've got a great venue um, right close to downtown Denver that we use pretty much every year now. So at this juncture, a lot of it's muscle memory. Um, yeah. It's just it's just repeating, repeating the same patterns. Um, although COVID did kind of, you know, knock that on its heels in a lot of ways. But we didn't stop, right? We we kept going, going, and I believe that we're the longest running um, uh, camp that has never had a break, um, and we're one of the first camps that ever that ever uh, that ever started. Um, um, it, you know, the the first one was in two thousand seven. Mm-hmm. That's uh, no, you, I mean, you guys really do uh, an amazing job, you know. And anybody who's you know in the region or area, it is it is worth the trip. To attend, uh, you you can see the difference, you know, in a really well organized and run event, and one that you know is not as well. Um, so, fast forward a little bit, um, you know, you decided to get involved in the Drupal Association. You know, you mentioned how they played a big role in taking over uh, the, the Drupal cons and bringing in you know professional help. Um, I, curious what inspired you to become a board member you know how did you one day say you know i want to get more engaged in in that aspect of the community you you don't remember oh lord <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, <laughs> like what like, you know like if i ever see i, I don't even know <laughs> so 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 uh, way back when um when we were when we were uh, when we were doing examiner together, and that's a little a little a uh, little uh, little tidbit that maybe you were planning on dropping on people um, later on in the in the in the podcast uh, in the interview. But um, we you know we got so involved in 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 uh, in running Drupal DrupalCon um, Denver, like our team at Examiner was heavily involved in it. Um, most of the people who were organizing it was from our, were from our team. And, um, um, it was you actually at one point that said, Hey, Matthew, you know, they run, they, they run, they run, uh, um, elections for this thing. Right. And, uh, you, you'd be, you'd be pretty good at doing this. Like given, given the organization stuff that you do around, around the camp and, uh, what I've seen in terms of. DrupalCon and uh, the stuff that uh, that you're doing for 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 us, um, I think that you should uh, I think that you should run. And I laughed at you at the time, <laughs> so I'm to blame. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, later on, I was working for a uh, uh, an agency called Atten Design Group, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, during that period of time, um, you know that that sort of seed that you put into my head um sort of it sort of grew at that point um and uh uh and i ran because i felt like um there was a need for folks out in the uh in the uh um drupal community to see that um that people who are generally non-coders can be can be can be just as um active and just as uh committed and just as effective as coders if you take a look at my my Drupal, my Drupal uh, .org, um, uh, profile. You'll see that I've got a sum total of four code commits um, in in you know in sixteen years. And it's not that I haven't code coded in the past or anything like that. And it's not that I wasn't an actually a pretty good coder at one point. But with the Drupal community, I did very little coding, um, and uh, um, uh, but it felt like it felt like there was this sort of gap, um, and there and I felt like there needed to be there needed to be somebody who could who could act as a as a role model, um, um, and help other other people out there who felt like maybe they were um, maybe they were considered as second second class citizens within the community. That no, that's not the case. Um, and one of the things that I went into the association wanting to do. Um, because I'd been I'd been on on nonprofit boards before, um, understand governance and and uh, and so on. What I wanted to do coming in was change one thing, and that was uh, elected members of the board. I wanted them to be on the board for more than one year. 
um, because my experience in, in other nonprofit uh, organizations is when you hit one year, that's when you're just starting to understand what, it, what the heck you're doing and uh, when you start to start to be effective. Um, so my claim to fame on the association is that um, I got board terms for elected board members increased from one year to two years. Um, and, and I was in a weird situation where um, I ended up uh, serving, uh, I think, like two, two years and seven months or something like that because of some quirky things that happened around around making making um, those uh, those positions two years to help them make that work. Um, and it was a good time. Like, I'm, I'm super happy that uh, that uh, that I uh, that I ended up uh, on the on the board of directors because there was another board member there who um, introduced me to Pfizer, um, where I work now. Um, and, uh, and that's ended up being a really, really wonderful partnership. And that would be Mike Lamb. That would be, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, how does one go about becoming a board member? Like, yeah. So every year, and um, I apologize, it's been years since I did this, so I don't know quite uh, what the timing is. But every year, there's a call for uh, for folks to nominate others or self-nominate. Mm -hmm. And, and um, when you self-nominate or somebody else nominates you and you say, okay, I'm, I'm a chump, I'll take the nomination. Um, uh, um, when you agree to, to, to be a nominee, um, what happens is uh, uh, you go through a series of, of, uh, of public debates, interviews um, with other, with other, with other nominees, you fill out, uh, you know, a profile, stuff like that. And ultimately, it uh, it lands on um, uh, an election week, um, where um, the election is run um, in in uh, I believe they're using ranked order um, uh, elections at this point. So it might go through several several rounds before you figure out who who's uh, who's hit um, 50 percent plus uh, plus one. Um, but basically, that's the process where you where you where you get nominated. You talk a lot. You do a lot of social media stuff. Um, you do some 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 interviews, and then there's an election. Wow. Um, I, I want to I, I I because you know at at the top of the show I talked about how this is you know impact us you know personally and professionally so much, and it really has changed many lives. Um, you know, the networking component, right? You think about your story and the different like steps, um, you know, Boris introduced both you and I to Drupal, which changed our careers, you know, as part of your stint on the DA board, you ended up meeting Mike Lamb, who's, you know, uh, he's the VP of tech now or the SVP or, you know, he's, he's you know, huge at Pfizer and, and technology. Um, you know, it really, uh, everything sort of comes together. I don't want to say serendipitously because, you know, we work so hard to make these things happen. Um, but it's sort of like, you know, the, you know, one thing begets another when you're part of this community and you make these connections. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, uh, and, and what I would, what I would say is that even if the software were to disappear off the face of the planet tomorrow, the, the, uh, the, uh, the connections, the, the, the friends, some friends who are like family, um, none of that will go away, right? Um, and and so much, so much in for me at least in my career, um, have been what appear to be a series of happy accidents, but in reality, I think really are um, building relationships, um, and and uh, and those relation and how those relationships can can uh, can um, lead to lead to professional opportunities. Um, so, you know, I, I would say to folks out there who are, who are, who are watching, go, go to camps, go to meetups, talk to people, um, make friends, um, especially if you're, you're earlier, early in your, in your career, um, those things make a huge difference as you move forward and don't be frightened to ask people questions. Um, don't be frightened to ask people for the things that you think that you need um, within your career in order to in order to sort of level up. 
because most of the time people will say yes. And I know that there's always this fear, this sort of nagging fear. What if they say no? What if I'm rejected? But frankly, um, almost everybody that I've met within the Drupal community has been kind and generous with their time um, and uh, generous with their with their information um, uh, and skills. And why wouldn't they be? We're an open source community. It's built into our DNA. Yeah, and I think all of us have benefited from the same. You know, Boris sat down with me and introduced me to Drupal in a coffee shop. You know, with no potential benefit to his business, um, you know, just to be a member of the community. And so I've always tried to repay that, you know, and, and I think, you know, it, it just kind of, you know, lives in that cycle of, of people trying to help each other and, and you know, pay it forward. And, um, you know, since we're a little dreamy eyed, um, before we jump back to the professional stuff, um, there's so much to talk about still on that front. I'm wondering if you have a, and, and this is like a, such a broad question, but you know, do you have like a favorite uh, Drupal memory or experience? Oh, there are so many. That's not fair. Um, <laughs> I I think maybe um, maybe my favorite was getting up on stage for the pre note in Amsterdam. And doing Bohemian Rhapsody with uh, with uh, with crazy crazy Drupal lyrics um, associated with it, with uh, with uh, you know people like uh, like uh, Cam Vertessi who's actually a professional um, uh, uh, um, a professional um, opera singer, um, you know, on the side of doing doing uh, doing technology stuff. That was probably the best. Um, um it was so bizarre getting out on a stage looking at we had a lot of people who showed up at that uh at that uh um at that particular at that particular DrupalCon. it was probably i think you know 1800 people or so uh, and so forth and just making an ass out of myself it was fun the the pre-notes i don't know i don't even you know i'm, I'm i shouldn't even talk I, I haven't been to one in a very long time <laughs> uh they're too early in the morning but they, you know, they, they were such a, a special and awesome part of, you know, the, the conference experience and Jam and Robert and everybody did, I mean, just such an impressive job in, in, in putting that together. Like you said, Bohemian Rhapsody with like Drupal specific lyrics was just a aspect of a show. Um, right. It was really, you know, impressive what they did and, and always entertaining. Um, yeah. I mean, if you want to, if you want to see a bunch of, uh, 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 adults making, uh, you know, it, it, willingly making idiots out of themselves. Yeah, they're all the pre notes, I believe, are are or many of them are available on on YouTube. You can look them up, and they're they're funny. Oh my god, I didn't realize. I mean, that makes sense. You know, we recorded these things. I, I hadn't thought about that. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's fun. Like you know, like if like uh, you know, Dries, you say if you you know if you're not having fun, you're doing DrupalCon wrong. Right. Like, you know, a big part of it is going out there, meeting people, spending time together, enjoying yourself. Um, and uh, I think the pre note uh, really, you know, really did that well. It was just too early in the morning <laughs> for everybody who was having fun the night before. It was brutal. Um, all right. Let's let's jump back. You know what? We, we don't have too much time. And, and on the professional side, there's some really awesome stuff that's coming up. Um, I'm going to cherry pick and jump through it. Um, you know, we met, you know, you, you have been working at Ping Vision. Um, you and I met um, and we got together and we worked on Examiner. Um, you know, in particular, um, Examiner was the first uh, top 100, first top 50 website to run Drupal. But, but most interestingly, in the context of this talk is that uh, we were responsible for creating, you know, I don't know, 33% or more of Drupal 7, you know, which today is still the most popular version of Drupal ever. While we were migrating from a giant to original site. I mean, don't forget that. Like we were literally flying the airplane um, and, and putting the airplane together at, at the same time. We wrote taxonomy for, for Drupal 7 um, while we were migrating content 
and tech the you know using taxonomy into the like it was crazy there's no reason that project should have succeeded like it was nuts it really was we were fortunate to have a really group of amazing people which you know gave me confidence in our ability to pull that off uh, but it still you know stretched the edge of reason you know it really was uh insane and um but it was a lot of fun and uh you know, um, I'm just, you know, I'm wondering if there are any, you know, lessons, you know, is there something that's replicable, you know, I, it, it pains me that whether it's agencies or, you know, the end users of Drupal, they do all of these interesting, you know, features and functionality that they keep internally that are not, you know, part of their secret sauce and that whole story, you know, examiners are a really great use case of an organization who, you know, prolifically i mean like you know meaningfully created drupal 7 i think it was like us aquia and the you know it was like a third a third and a third you know you know examiner aquia in the community you know each built about a third of drupal 7 um you know uh, navigating the community process you know while running a business you know you know looking back on that do you remember you know, anything in particular where you say, you know, look, you know, if you're interested in getting more engaged as a company and in, in creating Drupal as part of your build process, you know, here's something that you should never do <laughs> or, or here's something that I, you know, I, I, you know, that, that worked well for us. So that's, that's interesting. I think, I think one of the things that um, a lot of, a lot of organizations get wrong is, um, I'm just going to use it. It's there for me to use. I'm going to be isolated. Um, they may not even know that the community exists. Um, completely siloed, right? And there isn't there isn't this sort of this sort of recognition that um, there 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 are tens of thousands of people out there actively every day. Um, donating their own time, their own energy, or their company's time and energy towards producing producing something that is is uh technologically awesome but but also it's a social experiment um that uh, and i and, and it's an accidental social experiment let's let's face it um um i don't think that dries ever could have imagined that it would have exploded like it did and it became you know to become the 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 the, the absolute i think probably the largest open source community um out there i think probably is at least one that's active um the way that uh, the way that drupal is active um and 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 i think that if you can if you can just just you know put it in your heart that you're going to contribute back 5% of uh, of what you what you're working on um that makes a huge difference um and it could help the next the next uh, organization um, with uh, with their with their project. Um, and I know that there can be this sort of notion of I don't want to give up my intellectual property. Um, um, but in the end, I think I think that uh, that you lose so much potential um, vibrancy, and you lose you you lose possibilities. When you when you aren't willing to to share at least a little bit of what you've been working on, and that could be is that could be code, or that could be going to a meetup and saying, "Hey, look at the cool thing that we built, and this is how we built it," or it could be doing, or it could be sending one of your employees to to uh, to a DrupalCon to do a session. Um, it could be all kinds of different things. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be the code, but when you get involved, even just a little bit. It's a game changer, I think, for for most organizations. Yeah, I mean, examiner getting involved in the community is how we were able to go out and hire a lot of the top talent. Um, you know, it really, you know, we we did it in a in a self interested fashion, which is you know how open source works. Um, you know, we we tremendously benefited from doing it. Um, I think you know you made me just think of something. Um, one of the things that I remember taking away from it is, you know, uh, a lot of organizations will build software with the intent of potentially open sourcing it later, and a lot of barriers come up. And one of the things yep. that 
forced to do with the examiner because we were you know building in Drupal 7 it wasn't released yet and we ended up going live on a you know way early before release um, we were always developing in the community and pulling it back in and that was a, a much better process you know to build your modules publicly and then to use them you know we our code repos were coming in off of drupal.org as opposed to the other way around and that workflow um, you know, tremendously changed things as far as our ability to, you know, um, contribute. And, you know, it was, it was, you know, something that was in some senses forced on us because of the nature of what we had to do and how we had to do it. Um, but it's something that I think a lot of organizations get backwards and might be counterintuitive. I'd agree with that. I think, I think that, uh, I think that, uh, um, I think open source in and of itself is counter counterintuitive. Right? How can you how can you make money off of something that um, you get for free? Right? Yeah. Like, like I think I think that uh, I think that uh, um, uh, there's an awful lot of misconceptions about what open source actually is and how it should be used, um, and, and how it can benefit um, organizations in uh, in 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 real ways, profitable ways um, that uh, that they didn't. That they didn't really that they didn't really expect, um, and that could be anything from a bookstore setting up a, um, a uh, um, an e-commerce site, which allows them to sell their books online, um, or you know it could be something like Examiner, where where uh, where we were driving revenue through uh, through through ads and uh, and then uh, and then paying paying our our writers with uh, with micropayments through a, through a special system right like there there are all kinds of ways that you can take these building blocks and chunk them together and somebody else might pick up something that you've you've contributed and turn around and make something completely different that you didn't expect out of it yeah uh, we only have a, a little bit of time left, but we, I really want to talk about Pfizer, and, and I don't know how much you you can talk about Pfizer. So perhaps it's good that we only have a few minutes left. Um, but uh, you know, Examiner was very innovative, and and I, you know, Pfizer, Mike Glam, like what you guys have done, you know, to me has always been the blueprint of how you know large enterprises adopting technology, not just Drupal should operate, you know, uh, from his getting involved in, you know, the Drupal Association and being on the board, you know, to how he recruited talent to, you know, how you guys organize his teams to, you know, how you build and run your sites. I mean, everything is, is really, you know, thoughtfully done at scale and, you know, to the degree that you can share some of what, you know, you're working on. Um, I, I think it would be great. Um, not to put you on the spot, but, um, you know, I, I'd love to just hear a little bit about, you know, what you guys are doing. And, you know, I know that you, you know, for example, have a lot of um, static sites, right? You know, so you've sort of changed your approach over time. And that's really interesting to see the evolution of, you know, technology and where organizations are going. And so, you know, maybe we could focus in on specifically that, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll leave it to you as to like what you can and can't cover. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say off the bat, um, anything that comes across as, uh, as sort of a fact or something like that probably isn't, it's my opinion, not my, not the, uh, the opinion of uh, the company that I work for uh, necessarily might be, might not be. Um, but uh, I want to I wanted to be clear that these are my words, um, not uh, not uh, not anybody else's words. Um, so when I started um, with Pfizer, um, they were all Drupal seven sites that uh, that were were being run, um, and uh, Drupal was the the back end um, uh, for each of the each of the uh, each of the uh, countries that was using using um, what. What I work on, which is called Pfizer Pro, um, and it was also the rendering engine um, for for uh, for the sites. And as you can imagine, if you're talking about um, using basically basically a distro model um, for all these uh, all these different markets, um, utilizing utilizing the same same sort of, sort of core software, but you got forty or fifty of them. Um, and they're all doing a little bit of their own thing. So the code bases um, start to start to um, 
start to diverge quite a bit, and you end up with a situation that's hard to manage. Um, and so one of the uh, one of the things that we've worked on is shifting that dynamic, um, making things uh, you, by by moving to a Jamstack um, sort of methodology. It means that we're in a position where sites can can be um, can be deployed more quickly um, than uh, than if you're using Drupal as a, as a rendering engine. But there are also all kinds of things that a Jamstack site can't do, um, which uh, or, or it's very hard for them to do. Um, like, how, how, would you, how would you use a Jamstack site to do a, um, uh, a tool that allows um, a doctor to dynamically figure out what the dosing should be for a, for a patient um, who's, you know, male or female, um, and, you know, certain height, certain weight, um, certain age, it becomes really, really difficult to do those kinds of things. Um, so that's where you need something like a like a like a services uh, based backend, and we use Drupal for that. So uh, from our standpoint, um, Drupal is kind of a crappy rendering engine. A lot of a lot of a lot of companies have moved to uh, to uh, um, headless Drupal, um, and uh, we've logically come to the come to the conclusion that that uh, we're going to use Drupal for the things that Drupal is really good at. Um, and in some instances, we'll, you'll, we'll use something else. It may not be Drupal. Um, we might use, uh, we might use um, um, a different uh, services based backend. Maybe it's a little Laravel app that we, we write, or, or, uh, or maybe there's a, a, a situation where we can utilize a third party system that already does something that we need, it, uh, need, uh, need to have done uh, that, we can, that we can hook into our front end. So we've got a we've got a web components uh, um, um, front end that uh, that lives within within a design system, and each of the components uh, um, um, lives within the shadow DOM, um, which allows us to control the uh, the components themselves a little bit more granularly granular um, than you might uh, have. Um, in a in a situation where you know the CSS could could bleed from from area to area on the on the site, uh, it's it's a it's a you know that we've we've made that choice consciously, um, and 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 I think it's put us in a position where um, we're far more efficient around around uh, around site management as as a whole, um, and that's super important when you think about the volume of websites uh, that uh, that a company like like Pfizer um, needs in order to effectively get medicines to patients who need them. Yeah, um, man, there's there's so much meaty stuff to talk about there, um, but we unfortunately do need to wrap up. Um, so a, a topic for another time, would love to get uh, some folks on to talk more about the approach. And, you know, from a Drupal community standpoint, you know, I, I think we always have to remember that you know, we need to keep evolving the platform. You know, it's a big part of, of what we do, you know, keep it relevant, you know, and uh, also recognize that it isn't always the best solution for every use case and need. And, um, you know, that it's okay to use lots of other technologies uh, and it's great to use lots of other technologies uh, to meet your needs. So uh, last thing I'm gonna uh, put on you real quick, uh, passing the torch, um, one person, whoever hits your mind first, who's been influential, you know, uh, as part of your uh, time in the community that I should interview next, who should it be? Oh, who have you interviewed recently? Oh, gosh, we've had some amazing, you know, Angie Webchick, um, Josh Koning. Um, I mean, uh, I'm really trying to get, you know, individuals that have an, an outsized impact, you know, not just because of what they're doing today, but because of what they've done over the last, you know, five, you know, 10, 15, in some cases, you know, like yourself, 15, 20 years. Um, but uh, you can email me after the fact, let me know. Um, I'm trying to out crowdsource my research. <laughs> you know, uh, I think, I think somebody that you should 
interview that I bet you you haven't, who could be really super interesting, would be Rachel Lawson. She she is uh, she is sort of quieter around the sidelines, but everybody knows who who she is because of the amazing work that she's done around um, in the Drupal Association, but also also you know interviews with uh, with with folks like Dries and so forth. Um, she's fascinating, and she's been part of our community for well longer than I have, um, I think, um, and. Uh, um, it would give a completely different perspective um, than maybe most of your most of your uh, most of your other other uh, uh, interviewees. That's a fantastic recommendation. This is exactly what I'm looking for: are interesting, unique, different perspectives. Um, and uh, yeah, that's fantastic. It's a really great recommendation. Thank you, um, Matthew. I, I wish we had another hour. Um, Man, so good to catch up and, and talk about yeah. these. Things. Um, I, I really appreciate your joining me. I really appreciate all our listeners joining us. Um, please remember, if you like this talk, upvote, subscribe, share it out, all that stuff I have to say. <laughs> uh, you can uh, check out all of our uh, interviews in this series. You know, we, we have talked to some really great people in the community. Go to tagone.com slash two zero. That's the number you know, 20 to zero. Um, you can also check out our tag one team talks, the latest technology topics at tag one.com slash talks. Uh, as always, uh, really appreciate your feedback, your input. If there's folks you'd like us to interview, you can reach us at talks at tag one.com. That's T A G the number one.com. And uh, once again, yeah. Uh, heartfelt. Thank you uh, to Matthew and to everyone who tuned in. Take care. Thanks for having me. Thank you, man. Sorry we, we ran up to time. Uh, really appreciate you doing this.